Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Assay at jonathanassay.com, and I'm so excited to be doing this short video for you today. Our topic, when he says he's not ready for a relationship. Uh, really quickly, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if any time during this video the content resonates with you, please hit that like button so I can be seen in the YouTube algorithms. Really quickly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis for a nominal fee. And the questions you post in the group, I shoot personalized videos just for you. So check out the link below to my group called Midlife Love Mastery. All right, let's talk about when he says he's not ready for a relationship. All right, you've heard this time and time again. You've heard um, how when men say that, that's just simply he's just not into you. And certainly you've been indoctrinated in this whole belief you know, with so much dating advice that men are hunters and men are chasers and men pursue and men will claim you. And it's got to be very frustrating for you out there. I know it's frustrating for me as well, especially the expectation of what men are supposed to do in relationship. And the reality is, is the vast majority of people out there are suffering on the inside in some way, shape, or form, not feeling good enough, not feeling likable, not feeling lovable, and it's wearing on human beings, particularly in the dating, mating, and relating realm. In fact, I truly believe dating now triggers the number one emotional health issue, which I just shared. I'm not good enough. And so this is really, if we lean into this conversation with a lot more depth than the rhetoric than you're hearing out there, maybe you can look at this from a whole different perspective. And that's my intent today, is to look at this particular when a man says I'm not ready for a relationship from a different perspective. And the reason why I'm sharing this and what sparked this is a couple things that have happened to me personally. Now, before I get into that, I just want to say it's very confusing for women to understand men these days because men biologically are driven by lust in the early stages of dating or limerence. And limerence is extreme infatuation. So a man might pursue you vigorously because of lust. It might be that sexual desire to conquer you from that perspective, or it might be limerence, which is extreme infatuation, which can happen for a variety of reasons, which could also include love attachment issues or the imago, which is discussed by Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt. Uh, attachment is Amir Levine, Rachel Heller. By the way, there's a link below to all the books I recommend. I didn't pull a copy of that one out today which I talk about. But there's a variety of reasons why we might be feeling limerent that has nothing to do with we're well-suited and well-mated for one another. So the dating process has a lot of pressure on it, particularly for men and women alike. There's so much pressure because these days we're meeting total strangers. We're meeting most often total strangers. The days of organically connecting with someone seems rather rare. And the problem is when we're meeting strangers, it requires almost a level of instant chemistry. Otherwise, the relationship will go nowhere. And this is true for women as well as men. How many times have you gone out on a date where you just didn't feel something for that person, which, which could have been a good candidate for you to be in relationship and they were into you and you weren't into them or vice versa? Or worse, when you're both not into each other and you're sitting there going, twiddling your thumbs, going, how long is it going to be until I can just walk out of this date? And I'm not, I'm not here to say I'm not sure there's a solution to this because the days of meeting organically is becoming more rare, especially with COVID these days. And it's put way more pressure on the uh, online way of connecting and worse, the swipe way of connecting. And there, I, there haven't been any studies to really look at why swipe dating is probably causing even more distress in the dating process. Here's the thing, I wanna lean into something very personal to me as I shared a moment ago that might give you some insight of how some men are feeling. I can't say this is for all men, uh, how some men are feeling. And this actually, and I'm chuckling for a moment, there's two things I wanna share. 
One is, um, I happen to live in a condo complex where um, it's a pretty good sized place. We have this cool pool, jacuzzi area, and I hang out with people. And there's this one gal I've been hanging out with quite a bit. In fact, she's now my Pilates instructor. She has a Pilates machine in her home. And, um, and we've been talking about our dating experiences and we're both feeling this same experience. We're both feeling the same experience of dating fatigue, dating fatigue. And as we share this, it's the reason why I'm saying this is we're kind of like balancing this, this I want to be in a relationship, but I'm just burnt out on dating. Or I want to be in a relationship, but I'm not sure I can take on the, the emotional responsibility of a relationship and the emotional responsibility of the whole courting process and the whole process of getting to know someone because it feels like a lot of pressure feels like a tremendous amount of pressure and we're both sharing our experiences with one another and what's kind of interesting is when we talk in the jacuzzi all these other people are listening in and they start chiming in and sharing their own experiences there was a young man at the jacuzzi the other day was saying how he's he's 30 years old good looking guy midwestern guy got a great job and he's absolutely frustrated he says in the younger generation, most of the women are on OnlyFans and they're just trying to seek to grow their Instagram pages and not actually connect. Now I know that's not true for all, but he says that's what it feels like to him. So we're experiencing this tremendous amount of dating fatigue and also, what did I write down here? Relationship responsibility. In other words, when you start forming a relationship with someone, there comes with it a tremendous amount of responsibility to be fully engaged and I know you're hearing this different rhetoric because when a man really wants something he's gonna go after it well it's a different ball game at midlife than it is when we're in our 20s 30s and 20s and 30s versus when we're in our 40s 50s and 60s and I know a lot of men are experiencing dating fatigue just like a lot of women are experiencing dating fatigue and the reason one of the reasons why a man might say he's not ready for a relationship it's because of the amount of responsibility it takes to get to know one another and now I want to share another experience that might give you some insight that I just recently had with a woman um, we connected through a dating site and I'll be candid with you she wrote me first I didn't see her profile and she happened to write me saying I just she just wrote me a beautiful message saying how much she loved my profile how she really appreciated the words. I even mentioned uh, in my profile that I lost a child. And so um, a lot of women reach out to me just with sincere uh, condolences and that sort of thing. And if you don't know this, um, most of you know that I lost my 19-year-old son, Connor, um, a couple years ago. And I share that uh, in my profile to give more intel into about who I am. So anyways, going back to this woman. So she wrote me this sweet little message and I wrote her back and, and I said up front, I go, you live 30 miles away and I'll be candid with you, I am just burnt out on, on long distance dating. And quite frankly, 30 miles is long distance in Los Angeles because uh, it takes an hour and a half to get to where she lives on, on, a, on a given Friday night. And I just don't have the energy to do it. In fact, I know a lot of women who feel the same way. You just don't have energy to get up get dressed up and go on a date even though you want to do it but if it's requiring a lot of and I, listen I'm not here to suggest that effort isn't important to make effort but it's so much easier to just go hey let's go meet for a drink around the corner with someone than it is having to plan where are you gonna meet all this sort of thing so anyway she did share with me that she's actually staying at someone's home nearby where I live and would you like to meet and at first I was up for it, um, and then um, she sent me another, and she wrote me these, I'm gonna be candid with you, beautiful messages, I mean, with depth, with, uh, with, because we share the same passion for personal development, spiritual work, she's a Reiki master, so for someone like me, this really jives with me. And at the same time, I'm feeling absolute burnout. I'm feeling absolute burnout. And. And I'm torn because I feel burnout and yet I'd like to be in a relationship. And at the same time, 
it's it's like how do you balance these two together and i think this is what's causing a lot of men and women to feel like they're not ready for a relationship but it's not the relationship they're not ready for it's this that they're not ready for it's the process of getting to know another human being with all of the expectations that come with the dating process i'm going to repeat that it's the expectation of, of of the dating process instead of the organic way of actually getting to know another human being. So I actually wrote her this morning how I felt and I want to share this with you all that might give you some insight. So give me a second to put on my trusty glasses. Let me take a sip of coffee real quick. Mm. Coffee mug says sometimes you forget you're awesome so this is your reminder. <laughs> so I want to share with you something I wrote to her. And by the way, it's quite long, so <laughs> give me a second to read this. I said, good morning. Let me start by saying I love the way you write. In fact, your words touch me to the core with a sense of absolute appreciation for communicating with such depth and openness. It is absolutely refreshing. And let me just say, it is very refreshing. My sense is we could speak for hours and hours because we speak the same language based on our personal development work as, our, as well as our spiritual connection to source. In fact, you may not know this about me. Professionally, I'm a dating and relationship coach who has written a self-help book about self-love. And I tend to be very attracted to those who share this passion of seeking to go, grow beyond the societal bounds of conformity. And you seem like, that, like such a lady. With that said, I'm feeling resistant to meeting you, which makes no sense. I'm going to repeat that. I feel resistant to meeting you, which makes no sense. It's hard to say if it's just dating burnout, the heaviness of the world right now, or my intuition suggesting you're not the one. These days, dating takes so much effort and often comes with grand expectations. And if there isn't instant chemistry when you're meeting a stranger, the desire to make even a tiny bit of effort feels like a drain, a waste of time, or maybe even misleading someone. With that said, the coach in me knows to go against any fear and make the effort, and at the same time, the idea of experiencing another letdown feels like another failure, which is weighing on me, and I suspect much of the dating world as well. Let me repeat that. Experiencing another letdown, which feels like another failure, which is weighing on me, which I suspect that much of the dating world is feeling as well. It's as if I'm experiencing, oh, it's as if I'm experiencing dating fatigue. In fact, I might shoot a video on this, which I'm doing right now. The hard part is it would be so nice to connect and meet someone for the first time without the expectations of it being a date especially the expectation that it's a man's responsibility to lead the process. What's going through my head, for example, how can I lead if I don't know if I even want to date this person? In fact, it feels like such pressure, it takes away the fun of just getting to know someone organically by just doing fun stuff together, hanging out where we if we live near each other. Does any of this make sense? Folks, I know a lot of people would criticize what I just shared as being TMI, they might criticize it as being beta male, it lacks confidence and such, and yet it's my truth, it's my truth. And in fact, if you're not familiar with my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? Chapter one, speak your truth, do it with kindness. And I share this because I have nothing to lose by speaking my truth, I did it in a kind, loving way expressing how I felt. Now, how, now, given what I suspect about this woman, it'll be well received. Only the entitled woman is going to look at that. And my, this is my opinion, by the way. Only the entitled woman is going to look at that and go, what a pussy. What a weak guy for writing that. He doesn't have the balls to come after me. This is the frustrating part, ladies. We don't know if we like, here again, I said earlier, if we're experiencing lust or limerence, we're gonna go after you like a rocket, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee relationship success. That has no guarantee of relationship success. And this is why playing a lot of the, the hard to get games and all the other games that you're taught to play doesn't work 
because there is an absolute fatigue and burnout for both men and women alike dating right now. And they, just like my friend at the jacuzzi, she's like, I just, I don't know if I want a relationship. This is what's the, the rub. We're not, it's not that people don't want a relationship. The real rub is they don't know how to get to know someone in an organic level without the pressure of it being a destination or dating process. Now, with that said, I will say pre-qualifying your prospect does a lot more benefit in the long run by finding out where they're really at in their life. And by the way, this is what I teach in my private coaching. I teach you how to be radically honest with someone to determine if you're on the same page. And if you need some help with that, check out the link to a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. That's what I help is learning how to ask the better questions because ladies, here's the bottom line. If we could take the pressure off of the expectation and, and actually get to know someone from an organic level, first, by finding out if you're on the same page with each other before you even meet, by, and, and by asking deeper questions, and just being upfront, saying, hey, look, this is a scary process. Can we just take the pressure off of the expectation and just to get to know each other organically, just to see if we're on the same page? That would make this process so much easier, I believe. Hey, listen, there is a different uh, car, car, there's a different pot for every kettle out there. So I'm just suggesting this is one way of looking at it. This isn't an absolute. There are certainly very much chivalrous men that go after what they want because they know what they want. There's a lot of men that go after what they want because it's based on lust or limerence. There's a lot of men who are scared. There's a lot of women who are scared. There's a lot of people that are feeling angst today for a variety of reasons. And rather than putting people in a box and making them out to bad, I'm here to suggest looking at it from a more compassionate way. This is why I continually recommend the book, If the Buddha Dated, If the Buddha Dated, because it takes out all the crappy men, masculine and feminine, male, female roles, and says, how can we get to know each other on a spiritual level? So with that said, I, I do plan on, if she still wants to meet me, I'll, I'll plan on meeting her because um, I think she's a good person and who knows where that can lead. And at the same time, I started with truth. And if people just started with their truth, they might have a better experience going forward. At least that's my invitation for all of you. Is this making sense? Does any of this make sense? I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. If you like my Led Zeppelin shirt, I actually went to this concert in 1977 at the Forum in uh, Los Angeles. I was there, it was so much fun. Um, again, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. If this had value, please like this video. If, there was, um, if, if you felt like there was value in this, please share this with your friends. All right, I think that uh, gives you some insight of why I think a lot of people are saying they're not ready for a relationship. It's not the relationship they're not ready for, it's the angst of getting to know another human being that most people are struggling with. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch, bye now.